Hi, today I wanted to talk about our virtualization station application again. Um, so right now we're up to virtualization station version 3. Um, many of you may have tried it already. Um, what I wanted to talk about today is that we do have a beta program going at the moment. So you can go to the virtualization station page on the QNAT website. Um, and there's a sometimes there's a banner at the top. Sometimes you have to click the beta program button. Um, but it will take you to a new page and it will give you um, the information about how you can sign up now to be part of the beta program, um, even have a chance to win a free NAS. Um, so the sort of improvements here is the uh, user interface is the main um, upgrade. So especially if you're managing multiple VMs, things are much better. Uh, right now we're at uh, beta stage one. Um, so that's currently open for another couple of weeks. Um, after that, we'll move to stage two. Um, and I'll scroll through this page here just to give you a few of the highlights between what's new with the, uh, the beta stage one and what's coming in beta stage two. So as we scroll down, um, the new interface is one of the biggest highlights. I love the new interface, it's easy to manage. Um, I'll show you a bit later on, I'll create a Windows 11 VM or something like that so that you can see how it um, has changed if you've done it before. Um, so here you can see everything in one pane of glass. You can see all the information about all the VMs that are running. Before you had to inspect each one um, completely manually, um, which wasn't very efficient if you had a lot of VMs. If you only had a couple running, wasn't a problem. But if you've got lots running, um, it's much easier to see now um, in the, the new um, uh, user interface that we have. Um, the virtual machine protection plans are now better. Before, um, the VM backups and snapshots were managed separately. Um, now it's all done um, all together. Um, scheduling can be done better as well. Um, you could do it between a week or a month before. Now you can do it daily if you want to. Um, sharing is also easier. Um, so if you wanted to share links uh, of your VMs to other people to use them, that's now done much simpler. Um, Beta 2, um, one of the big changes here is going to be high availability. So if you've got a VM running on one NAS, um, you can have a second NAS monitoring uh, that VM. If it goes down for whatever reason, uh, the VM will fire up on the second NAS so that your uh, sort of business continuity, if you're using the VMs um, for a mission critical purpose, um, the VM will uh, fire up on the second NAS um, as quick as possible to get you um, up and running um, again with with the same data that you've got. So that's going to be one of the new features um, in beta 2. So I'm not going to show you that bit because that's not in the beta 1 that I have running here. Um, and then at the bottom you've got the uh, how to participate and you can download the beta 4 at the bottom of the page. Um, so here on uh, on my NAS, so the NAS I'm running this on is a TVS-H1288X. Um, I am running QTS at the moment on this NAS, but you can also run it on QUTS Hero. It doesn't make a difference. Um, here I've got just 16 gig of RAM in this NAS. Um, so here what I'm going to do is create some VMs. But let me show you a bit about the interface first. So here's your individual VMs. You've got an overview pane, so you can see any resources of any VMs that are running. Uh, you've got your data protection tab, like I showed you in the previous screenshot. So here I've got um, a couple of uh, VMs already created that are set for uh, snapshotting. Um, management is largely the same, except your share links would all appear in one screen. Uh, preferences is, again, largely the same. Um, but yeah, so what I'll do now is I will go to the very top here and I'll click Create a Virtual Machine. And then I'll fire up another VM in the background as well, just so that we can see some, some data populating here. Uh, so here, if I go Create Virtual Machine, it's going to ask what I want to call it. So I'll call it a YouTube dash win 11 or something like that. So it's already detected from the name I've given it that it might be Windows 11. So it's automatically selected that. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to click Next. Um, so here it's asking some settings. And we do have an option at the top here for the mode. I've got it in Advanced Settings, but you can change it to Basic Settings. So it give you uh, fewer options to pick. It'll just go with more predefined options. It's up to you which you want to pick. I'll leave it in Advanced so everybody can see all the options. Um, for me on this one, I'm just going to choose pass through as the CPU model. Um, I'm going to drag the CPU cores all the way to maximum. Uh, 4 gig of RAM is fine for Windows 11. Um, I am going to untick memory sharing uh, just for my purpose. I don't need it, um, but you can change the RAM there if you need to. I'm going to leave everything else as default. I'm going to click Next. Um, to make the VM faster, uh, because my NAS is 
uh, plugged in via a UPS where the NAS won't just shut down um, unsafe. Um, I'm going to change it to force right back. It is a bit of a risk doing force right back. Uh, your VM um, has a chance to become corrupted um, if the um, NAS was to say lose power without the VM being shut down safely. Um, but it is generally a faster one. So I'm going to choose force right back. I would generally recommend most people don't choose that unless you are especially using it on a, a VM or you're backing it up. Um, another thing I'm going to change is the controller. Uh, for the best performance, I'm going to change it to Vert IO. Um, so that's what I've got it set to. 250 gig, I'll leave it there for now. Um, new image path, yes, it's a new image. I'm going to let it create a new image. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to change the network adapter to Vert IO um, because the Intel Gigabit Ethernet adapter um, doesn't really take advantage of the 10 gig throughputs and things. So I'm going to change it to Vert IO. Um, so I'm happy with that. Click Next. Uh, so now it wants the uh, location of the installation file. So I'm just going to click this box here, go to virtual, ISOs, and I've already got the ISO uploaded into the NAS. So I'll click OK on that one. Um, but because I chose Vert.io for a couple of things there, the hard drive controller um, and the network adapter, um, I'm going to add the guest tool CD. So this is a way to do it. Um, previously, you would have had to add an extra CD-ROM, uh, um, then load in the guest tool separately. Here, if I just tick it one click, I've already got an extra CD-ROM drive with the Windows guest tools added. And um, we're going to use that for some drivers uh, as we go through the installation. Uh, click Next. I'm happy with that. I'll maybe change the keyboard to English UK. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm happy with everything else. Click Next. Now, I'm not going to tick the box for automatically starting the VM after creation um, because anybody that's installed Windows knows it says uh, press any keys to start the install. Um, if I click that now, by the time I get there and look at that, if I've already missed the opportunity to push that. So I'm not going to tick that. I'm just going to say create. Um, so that's going to create it. It's going to give me an option to choose a lot of mandatory information automatically. Um, I'm going to say cancel there because I don't have things like license keys and things. I'm just installing it uh, separately. Um, and I'll show you a couple of tricks to get it installed because Windows is getting uh, very finicky with the information it needs to set itself up, um, especially online accounts. Now, you can't do local accounts without a little trick. Um, you must use like a, a live.com account to, to sign in and log in. Um, I don't want to do that, and I'll show you how you get around that. Uh, so here we've got the overview. I've got all my virtual machines. So I'm going to click on the YouTube Win 11 one, which is the one I want to run through here. Um, so here's all the settings information of it. That's fine. Um, everything you'd ever need to know about it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up the, uh, the Windows 11 here. So I can click into the uh, console, click Start. So now I'm looking here for press any key to boot from CD and press the button. You want to get about a second to click that, so keep your eye out when you do start it. Um, so I managed to catch that, I think. Um, so now it'll bring us into the uh, Windows um, 11 setup. Uh, so this is the um, latest ISO that I could get um, as of mid-March from Microsoft's own website. Um, so let me show you the version. I think it was in the file name there. If I go to the ISO section. Uh, so yeah, Windows 11 uh, 22 H2. So that's the one I'm using here. I went with the English International version. Um, I think the normal one is just English. That's uh, the US English version as well. Uh, so here we are back to the setup. So it's, I did catch it in time. So it's automatically populated English UK. Click Next. Click Install Now. Um, so we'll go through the, uh, the setup here and we'll uh, get the installation going. Uh, so here I don't have a license key. So I'm going to click at the bottom there. I don't have a product key. So that's fine. It'll let me carry on there. And I'm going to choose the 11 Pro N version. So we'll click Next. Uh, accept the agreement. Click Next. Now I'm going to choose Customize Install here because I have to add the drivers for some things. You can see here it's asking where do I want to install Windows. And Windows doesn't have the Vert IO drivers, and because my hard drive is mounted with a Vert IO controller, it can't see it. So here I'm going to click Load Driver, click Browse. Now I want the second CD without any labels next to it, and I'm going to browse down to the Windows 10 section and AMD 64, because it's 64 bit. Click OK, and I'm going to choose the Red Hat Vert IO SCSI controller. That's the one I'm going to go. 
Click next, it'll install that, and as soon as it brings me back to that original screen, we should now see the 250 gig storage device that I created um, when I was setting up the VM. So we see that now. Now don't click next yet if you've done the network change like I did with the Vertio network adapter. Um, you need to, at this point, now add the driver for that as well. So even though you're uh, sort of doing Windows setup for storage information here, now is a good opportunity to add the driver for the network controller because the installation won't give you another opportunity to add that. Um, and again, Windows is a bit finicky now. You, it's going to sort of refuse to let you carry on if you don't have an active internet connection. So I'm going to say here, AMD64, click OK again. It'll give me that same list I saw before. This time I'm going to choose the Ethernet adapter and click Next. Um, you won't really see anything change here of doing that because we weren't looking at Ethernet adapters at the screen we were at, um, but it will add that network adapter driver in there so that when we get later in the setup, it will have it in there. Uh, so there's drive zero. Now I'm going to click next. I don't need to add any other drivers. Um, so now this bit's fairly automated. Um, I'll stay quiet. We'll fast forward this bit and I'll come back to you the next time I have to uh, uh, click something as part of this setup. But this shouldn't take too long and I'll be back in a minute. A few moments later. Okay, so that didn't take very long at all. Uh, so now I'm going to go through the setup wizard, um, picking the region. So UK is fine for me. Um, keyboard's right, UK is fine. I uh, don't want to add a second layout, no, so I'll click skip. Um, so now we'll go through the, the setup. Now here is where um, Windows will effectively only give you an option now to type a login name. Uh, there used to be an option to separately click that you wanted a local account. Um, but that seems to have gone in this version of the latest version of the Windows installer that I've got. Um, so first it wants me to name the device, so I'll just call it um, uh, YouTube-Win11 or something, that's fine. Uh, click Next. Uh, so when it brings us to the next stage of the setup, um, it's going to start asking us a lot of questions, but effectively now Windows 11 is pretty much ready to go and installed. So it's just done a quick reboot there. Um, so yeah, we'll go through the uh, the final stages of the setup, and uh, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like here. Okay, so I'm going to set this up for personal use. Click Next. Um, says you must sign in. Here is where there was other options for local sign-in, but they're all gone. You can't see any other option anywhere, so you click Sign In. Um, now the trick is to type your email address here as no at thankyou.com. Don't know why this works, but if you type any other random email address, it, it, it really doesn't work. So I'll say no at thankyou.com, click next. Now it asks you for a password. Type anything you want in here. I just pushed a bunch of buttons on the keyboard there. So yeah, just a bunch of numbers. Uh, click sign in. It says, oops, something went wrong. That's absolutely fine. And then click next. So now it will let you do a local account. So here I'll put my name in here. So now we'll do a, uh, a local account. Um, enter a password that I want to use for Windows. So I'll type that in. Uh, security questions, I normally just go first question A, second question B, and then the last question I do C. Click Next. Uh, so now it'll ask a lot of questions. I always choose the bottom option here, so no, I don't want it to use my location. No, find my device. Now here they've hidden the sending information to Microsoft on a scroll down, so you have to scroll down and say required only, accept. Click no, click no, and click no. Um, so largely that's Windows installed. I think uh, one of the next screens we'll see is logged into Windows, uh, start menu open. Um, and then you get to choose what you do next. Um, but we'll be online because we've added the drivers that we needed to uh, to, to get us online uh, with the Vertio driver there. Um, so if your NAS is connected uh, with a, a 10 gig connection or something like that, you're now able to, to utilize that in the VM. Um, my first step is normally go in and install a bunch of Windows updates. Uh, just make sure it's all up to date, um, but that's entirely up to you. Um, I'll give you a quick look around just to show um, how I've set up the VM and how everything's been passed, passed through to the VM. Uh, so this should only take a second and we'll see that. Uh, 
Uh, one thing I can do while it's doing this is we can go back to the uh, the setup of the uh, the VM itself, um, and we can um, edit this if we need to. So we can edit uh, the VM, and we can go across to the CD-ROM. We no longer need um, the Windows installer, so I'll click the little eject button next to that and apply it. This way, it'll stop asking us to press any key every time the uh, the VM boots up. Uh, so that's a, a step we can do. That Windows telling us we're almost there as well, and. It was right, we're there. Uh, so here we're now in uh, full-blown Windows. We can use it however we want. Um, so here you can uh, right-click on the Start menu. We'll go to System, and we can see that we've got everything here. So we've got everything passed through. So there's the uh, Xeon W1250 that this NAS has showing, the four gig of RAM I assigned to it. Um, and handily from this screen, you can also access Windows Update. It usually tells you there's no updates available, but as soon as you click Check for Updates, it will go off and start doing a plethora of updates. Um, so yeah, that's Windows up and running. Uh, once I've done all the Windows updates, I'll probably go to uh, the uh, Explorer. I'll go down to the, uh, the, the, the CD drive that I added with the Windows Guest Tools. So that's usually the last or the highest letter here. Um, so if you go inside here, you've got an option to run the uh, QNAP Guest Tools application here at the bottom. Um, and what that will do is it will install um, all the things needed to, to manage the VM um, directly because it is a virtual machine and that just optimizes everything for you. So we can leave those Windows updates running in the background. Uh, we can come over here while it's doing that. I can come over here and I can start up a Ubuntu VM if I want to as well in the background. Um, so here in the overview now, I can see everything that's running. I've got lots of information about uh, the two VMs. I can see here with this one pane, I can see what's running, what memory's been allocated, how much resource has been used by each different thing. Uh, so it's a, it's a handy screen. And here you've got the list of all the separate VMs. Uh, so here you've got a sort of screenshot so I can see if I click into the Ubuntu, it's already booted and logged in, ready to go. So that's handy. Uh, at the same time, Windows is still installing all of the, the updates that are happening in the background. Um, so yeah, while this is happening, we could even come in here and say, hey, I want to check for some updates. Uh, maybe there's been updates since I last ran this VM. Um, but this is, uh, everything's running simultaneously all at the same time. Um, so now oh, that there is an update, so we can say install now on that one as well. Uh, but as those are running, you can see everything that's happening. One one view here, and you can click the cog next to anyone and choose specific actions for, for that VM. Um, I could come down here to data protection and I could um, edit my job so that uh, I can add this plan one job I can say I want to add in uh, the YouTube VM I just created so I can say I want to edit this one go in and change some options or add a new plan so create a new plan let's say plan two snapshot or backup so say that's yes, snapshot I'll say I want the YouTube win 11 one done um, yes I want to do it on a schedule so I could say I want it to happen um, let's say daily at 217 that's fine and click create so now I have a um, another uh, backup job, a snapshot job that's happening there for the, the VM. Um, so it's very easy to use, a very big improvement, a very welcome change. Um, so it's really easy to set up and use. Uh, and just for a bonus there, uh, an updated way of installing Windows 11 because every version they release, it seems to want a different way to install it or get it up and running, especially if you're just testing and messing around with stuff like I usually am. Um, that's how I usually go about doing it now. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, please do let us know in the comments section down below and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.